here is what we are talking about today. Finally, we are talking about our new Neo Caradina Shrimp Breeding Room. This room is coming along really well. Uh, we've actually been utilizing this for about a almost a year now and uh, it's really been working out good. So I wanna do an overview today, show you what we keep in here, show you how this whole room's set up, how we run it, how we do water changes, what we do for filtration, and there's a lot to go over. So let's dive right into it. What is going on, Shrimp Keepers? This is Rob with FlipAquatics.com, and today we are talking about our new Neo Caridina Pond Room. This thing has been a long time coming. We started this project in late 2022. We finished it in early 2023, and we haven't even got to talk about it yet on the channel, so I wanted to do that. Um, we did do a little video for the members just to kind of show them what we have going on, but I wanted to do the official video now for you guys I hope you guys enjoy this. We're gonna really dive in and show you what we have going on in all these stinking ponds behind me. And we're gonna go over a lot of stuff. So you guys buckle up, let's get right into it. In this room, we are keeping 58 of these IBC toasts. So these guys are originally 275 gallons. We cut them down to where they're about uh, roughly 200 gallons of water, maybe a little bit less. So here's the 200 gallon mark, they're in here. So they're probably like, I don't know, 180, 185, something like that. But I wanna show you kind of what we're keeping. This whole row is currently shut down at the moment. Uh, we have some plans for that. Gonna be potential breeding, so USA bred stuff, potentially overstock. This literally is all cherry shrimp, all cherry shrimp, all cherry shrimp. This whole row right here, all assorted Neo Caridina. And then this whole row is all mono shrimp. So those are like our biggest sellers. So what I'll do is I'll actually take you through these rows, pull a few out, show you roughly how we're keeping them, what they look like in the ponds. And then we'll move on to this side, which this side is kind of like our miscellaneous, like uh, fantasy blues, bloody Marys, black rose, things like that. And so we'll dive right into it and show you some shrimp and also talk about how we're keeping these and how we have this whole room set up, the plumbing, the water changes. We're gonna dive right into it and all the things are gonna be covered. So this is our first cherry shrimp row and cherry shrimp are basically uh, red and neo caridina shrimp. They're fairly easy to keep. This is roughly what a pond looks like. So every pond has a sponge filter in here. It has an uh, intake sponge so that no shrimp can go down the drain. Uh, it's got a water change line where we do the water change. I'll show you how all that works here momentarily. But I want to show you these guys. Uh, now, just one thing to really point out. We get, a, in my opinion, pretty high quality cherry shrimp. Um, these guys would probably rank in like the, the fire red, Sakura, some maybe painted fire red. And basically what that means is like the more solid the red color, the higher the grade. One thing about cherry shrimp is they get a better color when they're on a dark substrate. So the fact that these guys are in a white pond and they're still as red as they are means that they're, they're pretty good in my opinion. Now, I'm a little biased. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a catch cup. I'm actually gonna pull some of these out and we can take a peek at them. Usually we stock these ponds with about 1600 shrimp, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, just depending on um, you know how many come in in our orders. But this is roughly what a pond will look like. We always wanna see a little bit of algae on the side, just something natural for them to graze on. Between every order of shrimp when we bring them in, if we're not breeding them, um, we clean this pond, reset it, get it ready for the next set. That way we don't have cross-contamination. But let me catch some of those and we'll take a look at what they look like in the catch cup. So here's a better look at the cherry shrimp. Obviously like the clearer ones, the ones that have like, you know, a little bit of patchy color would be like the cherry shrimp grade. And then some of these girls are like solid red and looking really good. This is just roughly what you can expect when getting cherry shrimp from us. I think these look pretty freaking good. So. Again, just a random scoop. I literally just caught them off the side of the filter because that's where they hang out. Kind of cool to take a look at them because I don't get to look at these as much as I probably would like just because I'm busy. Yeah, just really cool to see them. Next up, we're going to focus in on the assorted Neo Caridina. Now, these guys are my second favorite in this room, and that's just because they have such a pop of color. And this is basically just an assortment of different colors of Neo Caridina shrimp. People call them the Skittles pack, and there's just all sorts of colors so like if you're just looking for a colorful tank these are definitely the ones to go with 
Now, over generations, these will breed out brown slash wild types. That's the one thing. If you're not, if you're looking to breed, I wouldn't get these. But if you're just looking for a pop of color, maybe some cleanup crew, some little bit of algae control, these are definitely your best bet because look at the color on these. Like there's just so many different varieties, different colors. Like I see snowball shrimp, I see potentially Bloody Mary, I see orange pumpkin, uh, fantasy blue, like literally a little bit of everything, some babies in there. And so this is just a really fun thing if you're just getting into the hobby or you're not looking to breed. Um, these are definitely the ones that I would go with because I mean like you can't beat all that color and that pop of color and that's why they call it the Skittles back. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> Our next row is all the different Amano shrimp ponds. Again, we break these ponds down, clean them, sanitize them, make sure they're ready to go for the next import. But this is roughly what one would look like. Now, this is the one we're currently selling out of so there's not as many in it. Again, these guys we stocked with about 2,000 shrimp roughly. You can see them all in the filter if i can get a good angle and then the lights kind of blur it but these guys they really don't have much color if you've ever seen a mono shrimp they're very very plain especially being in a white background so the pond's actually white so these guys are going to drain out their color a ton but these guys are the hardiest shrimp that you can possibly get and they're going to eat a ton of algae so if you're looking for a cleanup crew this is definitely the way to go uh they're fairly inexpensive compared to some other shrimp um, but again, if you have fish in your tank, these would be a great option for you because these guys can't hold their own. These guys, we always bring them in pretty small. A lot of people get them and they'll be like, hey, why are these so tiny? The reason for that is we want these guys to be small so they live their longest lives. They're also much easier to ship. Um, which means that you're going to get a higher quality product on the opposite side of it. Again, a monitor, one of my personal favorites, just because they serve so many purposes. So if you're looking to get into shrimp, this is where I would start because these guys serve such a great purpose in your aquarium. And if you can't keep these guys, I probably wouldn't try to keep it any other types of shrimp. So we just finished talking about this side. And before we get to this side over here, uh, let's first talk about these ponds, kind of how we do water changes our filtration system like how is this whole room running and it all starts with the filtration we do the simplest thing which is just air we run all of our air up above and uh what that does is it makes it really easy for us to turn the air on the air off and that's basically the life support for the tank so uh shrimp don't produce much waste so we don't need a ton of filtration we don't have to overkill it so a simple sponge filter will work great um, we can't use madden filters in here um, or we would, it's just too big of a space. So how we do water changes is pretty simple. And I'll show you where all this stuff comes from. Um, but this is where our water comes in and this goes to our filtration system. Literally all you do is turn it on and then you just run a water change like that. We usually let it run for, I don't know, four to six hours. It'll flow in, it will flow out there. And if you pop this off, you can kind of see roughly what it looks like. I don't want any shrimp get down in there but it's just a PVC pipe. We cut the sides out of it so that it has good flow. And then we put the intake sponge over it. And this is basically just the setup. So the overflow is over here. It's just drilled into the side. We got the pipe going down here and into our drain line. Um, now, if you walk over here, all of our drain lines, because we're in the basement, they go to a sump. Um, we don't have any floor drains, unfortunately. Uh, that would definitely make life easier. So they all drain into a sump and then the sump pump obviously pumps it up to the drain. Now the downside to this is sometimes our pumps go bad. And so we like having two pumps always, which I think this is the only sump that we don't have two pumps, but we have a sump pump there. And then we also have one drilled through over here and this comes over and sorry, we got our air pump blowing in here. So it's pretty loud, but this is roughly where the other sub pump is actually not roughly. This is <laughs> where the other sub pump is. And so we do have two sump pumps in here, um, which come up to it, a, a little T there. And then this is where all of our water comes from. Uh, this is RO water right here, but this is our normal filtration right here. It has a sediment filter, two carbon towers. One of the carbon towers removes uh, chlorine. The other one removes ammonia. And then that's what get fil gets filtered back over here to our aquarium. There's Curtis. He's one of our livestock team members here. So shout out to Curtis, but it flows over here and then it comes over to our ponds. Every single pond has a little tap in so we can do a water change pretty easy. And then they all overflow. So very simple system. Again, the air is just up above. It's a loop system. 
So it actually comes in right here, leaves right there. So it's a complete loop. And then everywhere in here, it has these little junctions up top, um, which look pretty cool, little archway. Um, but that's literally just to create the most even airflow possible. And, uh, and basically that's how we do it. And then this is pretty cool. We haven't talked about this, but this is our little station for double checking um, if there's any parasites on the shrimp. So that's like where, you know, the baggers will bag right here. They'll do all their things. Um, they'll take them over there. They'll confirm that there's nothing wrong with the shrimp before ever sending it. So that's another step that we do just to ensure that you guys get quality products. And then we have our little labeling system up here. Um, this is our system to record deaths. We record all of our medication. Um, yellow means that it's had a death in the past week, just one death. Um, and then red would mean that it's had three or more deaths recently. And so we're not selling out of it. Green means it's good to go. And then blue means it's currently in quarantine. And then obviously we label them. So that's kind of like our little system uh, for keeping track of everything and how these ponds are set up. Again, these are about 180 to 200 gallons, depending on where we fill them up to and how we have the overflow set, but pretty cool. So let's, uh, let's jump into this side and go over the rest of the shrimp that we have in this room. So I want to start in the far corner and kind of give you a whole tour of the room. So I actually turned the whole air off to the room. That way we could just go through and do a really quick tour of this side. Cause I know this video is getting a little bit long. These are orange pumpkins. This is a pond that is just clearing quarantine. It should clear. I think it clears next week. So this is coming out really, really quick, but this is what a super full pond looks like because what we had to do is we had a bunch in here too. This is the second pond that we keep for them and so we had to consolidate um and then this pond is coming in next week we have a fresh import coming so we'll be getting in about 1600 something like that and so that's what's going on here and this one is also i believe coming in next week this is another black rose pond this is the current black rose pond that we have set up which is just a solid black neo caradina these guys are just gorgeous i'm surprised these guys aren't more popular because I just love them i wish i could get like a really cool close-up of these guys but just a really cool shrimp again just solid black moving over here this is uh, Bloody Mary. So if you look in here, it's gonna look a whole lot like cherry shrimp. The difference with these guys is the color is actually the tissue, not the shell. So these guys are always gonna be a nice translucent color. Like you should always be able to see through them. Every once in a while, they'll get the back stripe, but it's not super common in these guys. These are bred from chocolate shrimp. So again, a really, really deep red color. You're not gonna get like the, the, the faded type colors. And then here's one that we've had a little bit longer. Same thing, Bloody Marys. Um, so you can see like a little bit of debris over there, a little bit more algae. And then we have two empty ponds and then moving over. This is our yellow golden back. Look at these guys. I mean, boom, <laughs> they just have so much color. So historically we had issues with these guys and uh, we got, we got, we started getting them in like, I don't know, I want to say like six months ago. And uh, for whatever reason, they're just doing way better for us. And so I'm excited to see that. You can see there's there's just a ton in here and they look phenomenal so they have that nice dark yellow stripe down their back um next up this is kind of like our carbon really uh breeding tank so you can see just so many and i mean so many babies i always look here and if you guys are wondering what these little bags are i think they're nylon or some type of material um they're basically um, bags with alder cones in it because we like having a little bit of tannins in here. Um, it's very good for the shrimp. So we always do that. Here's one that's like a fresh import. So uh, these alder cones are a lot newer. So you're going to have a lot more tannins, but something that's really good for their health and something that we always try to do. But again, this is like as fresh as it gets as far as an import. This came in, uh, we can look up here. These came in 1127. Um, so they've been here over a month. This is kind of what they looked like when they first came in. Uh, we did a little treatment for them. And uh, you can see over a month later, they're still doing phenomenal. And then another tank of carbon bellies, which these guys have black head, black tail. Um, that's one that if it will focus, um, maybe isn't the best color. Well, we'll focus on the bottom because that's where it wants to look. But black head, black tail, and usually clear midsection. A lot of these ones end up having the blue midsection. Um, but same thing. You can see there's just babies everywhere, all over the place. And then the next aisle is my personal favorite shrimp. 
which is the Fantasy Blue. This pond's almost empty. I think we're resetting it this week uh, to bring in a fresh import. But here's one that has a little bit more. Again, a lot of breeding going on in here, a lot of little babies. And so we need to get in here, call, remove some, do stuff like that. This one is what a fresh import looks like. Again, you have the tannin color, you have shrimp everywhere. And these guys are a solid blue color. Let's see if we can get this one. That he's just swimming across the top. Solid blue. These are bred from uh, chocolate shrimp as well. So they're from the same gene pool as the Bloody Marys and the Black Rose. But my personal favorite shrimp. And then this is our official breeding tank of them. So you can see we got tons of snails in here. We got, we got some duckweed. You know, everybody... If you, if you keep fish tanks, duckweed is just a part of keeping fish tanks. But anyway, definitely my favorite. I just love the blue color. We have a couple empty ponds. Then we have a fresh tank of snowball shrimp. Now, why these are called snowball is they're white. But then you see like the one right there on the side. It won't focus. But they actually have white eggs. So you can see the white saddle, which is basically like the eggs on their back. User error, haven't done this in a while, I apologize. And then this is the USA bred snowballs. So these guys have a little bit more crud in here. That's because we moved them from one of our 125s that had hornworth in it. And the only way to make sure we didn't, you know, get rid of any babies or put any babies in the plant tank is that we just had to put a lot of the plants in here and then slowly take them out over time. This is our red really tank. So similar to the carbon reallys, uh, but these have a red head and a red tail and a clear midsection. Sometimes they get a blue midsection as well. And those are called blue reallys, um, but really cool shrimp, pretty cheap too. And then last, but certainly not least, these are orange reallys. So same thing as the red, same thing as the carbons, um, but an orange head and an orange tail. These are actually one of my favorites. Um, we have a second pond of them, but I think these come in on Monday as well. And so these guys are just really cool. Um, they're not as popular as I would think it would be, but these are absolutely one of my personal favorites. Um, they're a little bit, I wouldn't say harder to breed, but like to get the good color, they're a little bit more difficult. So it definitely takes some breeding, some calling, things like that. But like you can see some with really good color back there. And so uh, that's what we got. So that's the whole pond room the neo caridina breeding uh facility room whatever you want to call it i uh, really happy with how this thing turned out so hope you guys enjoyed so that is what i have for you guys i hope you enjoyed this tour of our pond room and all of our different freshwater shrimp that we keep uh we do keep a whole different rack of caridina shrimp but these are the neo caridina these are the ones that most people consider the beginner easier to keep one but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you think this is pretty cool because this is something that me and my team are super proud of. This is something that we've talked about for a long time and we finally did it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video as always. God bless. We'll catch you on the flip side.